From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of the end of the world. The equatorial sun was strong, and yet as it filtered down through the heavy foliage of the jungle, it was not uncomfortably hot. All was well with the world, and Tarzan was happy. At his side was Torgo, the small native boy of whom he was so fond, and it had been arranged for Torgo to spend the next moon with his tall, white friend. Yes, it was a good life. Tarzan smiled down at Torgo. You are a day's march away from Mama Nagama already, Torgo. Are you sure you will not be lonesome? Torgo not a day lonesome. Grown man now. <laughs> of course, of course. Only even grown men sometimes miss their home and their way. Torgo not miss home. We'll be too busy hunting elephants and panthers and wild boars. Well, we, we will have to hunt for food. And you will have a chance to practice your skill with your bow and arrow. But, Torgo, you must remember this time that animals are to be killed only for food or in self-protection. Torgo, remember? While Tarzan away, Torgo protect tribe against Bulgani the gorilla and Numa the lion. Torgo very brave and strong. Well, of course you are. But, uh, Tarzan is tired, so if Torgo doesn't mind, we will have a short rest now. Well, if Tarzan tired... Oh, no, no, I wouldn't sit there, Torgo. <laughs> you are about to sit on Kota, the tortoise. Where? Kota? Is Kota dangerous? Tarzan? <laughs> oh, no, no. Kota will not harm you. He, he has heard of Torgo's reputation for strength and bravery, and even now he runs from you. Not move very fast. Well, it's running for him. No, he won't hurt you, Torgo, but I think that moss-covered log would make a better seat. Uh, oh, taking a rest wasn't a bad idea. Tarzan, you look funny. What is wrong? I thought I heard... Yes, it is. The cry of Tantor, the elephant. He's angry. Tantor angry? This is strange. I, I catch the scent of the Tarmangani, too. And yet an elephant seldom attacks a man. I must hurry to that spot. Someone is in grave trouble. Don't leave Turbo. Of course I won't. Jump on my back and hold your arms around my neck as tightly as you can. And remember, we must both be brave, whatever happens. With the small native boy hanging on for dear life, Tarzan streaked through the jungle. When obstacles loomed in his path, he grasped a hanging vine and hurtled over them. Now the scent of the elephant and of Tarmangani were close. Breaking into a small clearing, Tarzan could see the man kneeling upon the ground, his hands folded in prayer, and rushing toward the helpless target was Tantor, gone mad. <laughs> But at the sound of Tarzan's savage cry, the call of the bull ape, the elephant swerved in its path and wheeled to face a new enemy. Now a charge straight at Tarzan and Torgo. But just as it was about to strike, Tarzan grasped an overhanging vine and swung out of the path of the rampaging animal. The Tamangani is Mr. Martin, the missionary. Thank thee, Father, for sending Tarzan to save me. My prayers were answered, and I may yet be of service. Mr. Martin, take care of the boy. I must capture the rogue elephant before he kills anybody. Oh, no, let the animal go. What? You a man of the cloth, and yet you tell me to let a rogue elephant run free to murder all in his path? There is a far greater threat to life on the rampage. I have traveled many days to find you, Tarzan. Only you can save the people of the jungle from this new threat. My instincts tell me to follow that elephant. To kill him before he kills others. Believe me, the enemy of which I speak is greater. Even now, the talking drums of the jungle spread the message of horror, and soon there will be aught in the jungle safe panic. In just a moment, we shall return to our story of Tarzan. They formed a strange picture, those three in the tiny clearing of the jungle. A small native boy with round, wondering eyes. By his side, Tarzan, bronzed and powerful. 
And before them, the slender, aesthetic-looking missionary, the Reverend Thaddeus Martin. As you know, Tarzan, I've devoted my life to missionary work. The last eight years among the people of the Negalia tribe. You have done much good work, Mr. Martin. But uh, you've not told me of the danger that you say threatens the whole jungle. Well, have patience just a moment, Tarzan. I'm getting to that. Oh, I'm sorry. Torgo, sorry, too. <laughs> what have you done to be sorry for, Torgo? Torgo did nothing. But if Tarzan's sorry, Torgo's sorry. All right, all right. Now, now we're both sorry, hmm? We will both be patient while Mr. Martin tells us his story. Well, as I was saying, I've spent eight years among the Negalias. To all outward appearances, they had become good Christians in their way. But a few weeks ago, they came to me with the fantastic story that we're soon to witness the end of the world. The end of the world? They've deserted my small church and they've returned to their pagan gods. Each night, the jungle throbs with their frenzied drums and their maniacal dances. The Gallius hold dances? A, a kind you will never see, I hope. It's spreading, Tarzan. Their talking drums have broadcast the fear to other tribes. And by the time the full moon has come, my work of eight years will be wiped out and my people will return to complete savagery. But what can I do? Well, perhaps you can find out what and who is behind all of this. It's not the witch doctors, nor the snake men, nor the porcupine men. That much I know. But who else could originate such an idea? The, the end of the world? Oh, I don't know. I, I've questioned everyone in the tribe. They are too frightened to tell me anything. Mr. Martin, I, I will come with you. I will see what I can find out. But first, I must return Torgo to his people. The delay of a few days might mean the end of the world in a different sense, for violence may break out at any moment. If the end of the world comes, Tarzan... It not matter whether Torgo go home in land of Punyas or in land of Megalias. Every minute counts. Well, if this panic is spreading as rapidly as you say, Torgo will be no safer at home than with me. If you are ready, Mr. Martin, we will start for the land of the Megalias. All that day, Tarzan and Torgo and the Reverend Martin marched through the jungle. Several times, Tarzan caught the scent of the rogue elephant, but there were more important things at hand. That night, they rested briefly... And by noon of the next day, they approached the crawl of the Nagalias. To all appearances, it was indeed the village of a people awaiting death. In the Shamba, weeds choked out the young corn. Rodents overran the narrow paths between the cone-shaped huts. And the huts themselves were those of a people too sick in mind or body to care for their homes or their children. This is the sight that meets the eye by day, Tarson. At night, there is abandon. You uh, still have a room for sleeping attached to your small church? Well, yes, of course. It's but a short walk from the village. Well, if you will take Torgo there, I prefer to talk to the people alone. Mm. Torgo would not want to leave Tarzan. I may need your help later, Torgo. It would be better if you were well rested. Well, all right, then. Come, Torgo. Peace go with you, Tarzan. Peace with you, Tarzan. <laughs> What white man want? Galias not want white man. Wait. Not wait. And will come soon. All white men go to Lubuga. Wasia. Wasa. I have no intention of going to the inferno in the near future. The end of the world is not at hand. Signs plain. End world come at full moon. Your breath smells of much Kangala, and your words are those of a man Kangala has robbed of reason. Where is your chief? Me, Sibali, chief of Nagalia. What do you want? I am Tarzan, lord of the jungle. I come because you spread fear through the land. This false story of the end of the world. It is true. You, white men, all white men, enemies. Tarzan is your friend. He takes the armlet from his arm and gives it to you as a sign of friendship. Sibali, not take. Has no ornament to give in place. You speak in truth. You wear no ornament. There is hardly an armlet or nose ring or anklet among your men. W what is the reason for this? Tarzan asked too many questions. Better end his world now. Oh, ah! Wild elephant, run for life! The rogue elephant that had been stalking Tarzan's party ripped through the village with savage fury. Native huts and scattered debris filled the air. The natives ran in all directions, escaping through some fantastic miracle. High in a tree, Tarzan watched the scene. He could not spare time even now to hunt the deranged pachyderm, for his eyes must remain upon Ugar, the one native in the village who still wore ornaments of metal. That night, when the tribe had dropped from exhaustion after hours of reveling, he saw Ugar walk from the crawl. Tarzan followed him and saw him enter a crude cabin several miles away. 
The lord of the jungle crept to a battered window and peered in. The native quaked as he stood before a white man. Well, it's about time you got here, Ugar. You expect me to stay up all night? Came soon I could. What did you bring this time? Uh, here. Many rings, bracelets. A uh, bunch of junk. Why didn't you bring some good stuff? Not much left in village. Already you have most. There's still plenty. You see this coin? Nadi. Now watch. I wave my hands and it's gone. So. Oh, where it go? The great Zaker has caused it to be no more. I am the greatest magician alive, and if you don't bring me some real stuff tomorrow night, I'll make you disappear in exactly the same way. Tomorrow night, Ugar, try bring more. What you see in Crystal Ball today, great Zeka? The end of the world grows close, and if you die before I make peace for you, you'll go to the land of demons. No, no, don't send Ugar to land of demons. Our people send you all of rings and other ornaments. Yeah, you'd better. You see this handkerchief? The uh, D. What color is it? Ga, red. Now I pass it through my hands. Green. So can I change the fate of your people. When the full moon comes, you will go to the land of your ancestors or to the land of the demons. It's entirely up to me. Now, I want every coin and piece of jewelry in the village. I'm paying you for them. How much you pay for what Uga bring tonight? You've told no one outside of your tribe about me. No, I swear. Good. I shall pay you ten bottles of Kangala. Here. Take them. Uh. Let your chief distribute it. Uh, yeah. Go now. I, I go. Well, that's another tidy sum Don't of... Don't turn around or you'll feel the steel of my knife. Who are you? What do you want? I am Tarzan. And now that I see your game, I want a great deal. Yeah, sure. We can make a deal. The same deal you're giving the natives, trading cheap whiskey for their jewelry? They get their money's worth. What do you suppose a bunch of this native junk is worth? I should say that the native junk, much of it made of pure gold and set with precious and semi-precious stones, should be worth a good deal of money in distant ports. Okay, so I found a good thing. Look. Uh, let me turn around and, and, and talk to you. I, I don't talk so well when I've got my back to a man. You can turn around, but my knife remains unsheathed. Sure, sure. Well, so you're Tarzan. Heard a lot about you. You will hear more unless you go to the native village with me and admit that your stories of the end of the world are nothing more than part of your magician's act. Oh, you're wrong. My, my prediction is true. I sought my crystal ball. I don't know where your crystal ball came from. But I know the amateurish tricks you showed the simple native tonight can be bought in any bazaar in the country for a few coppers. You speak hastily. I speak with knowledge. Such tricks are advertised in magazines in many countries and can be ordered by mail. Well, uh, a few of them, perhaps. But I also have many important feats of magic. Let me, uh, let me show you uh, this one here. Stay at arm's length from me. Sure, <laughs> sure. But observe, my friend Tarzan, a great feat of magic. A mystical accomplishment of ledger domain. You uh, see this glass of water? Yes, I see it. I pour into it this small amount of white powder. So. And now the water is red. I suppose you're going to tell me that you have turned water into wine. I think that's the usual speech that goes with that trick. Oh, that's not the end of the trick. Watch carefully. Keep your eyes on the glass. See? Now I take the glass in my hand and I... Oh, my eyes! My eyes, I've been blinded! You see, Tarzan, you were wrong all along. I have some fine tricks. And you were wrong, too, about my prediction of the end of the world. It will come soon. For you. <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return to our story. In the small shack of Zaker the Great, Tarzan sat on the edge of a soiled cot, his head hanging and held between his great hands. His legs were shackled to a thick iron ring in the wall. But this did not bother him nearly so much as the horror of blindness. The loss of one's eyesight is a tragedy to anyone. But it seemed an even more overwhelming catastrophe to one whose life was spent in the wilds of the jungle. For once, Tarzan was beaten. You want something to eat or not? No. 
No, nothing to eat. Hmm. <laughs> you, you really ought to, you know. I fixed a mighty tasty dinner. A bit late for dining, perhaps, but uh, I've had a lot of things to get ready for tonight. This is the night of the full moon? Oh, yes, yes. There's a nice full moon. <laughs> uh, too bad you can't see it. <clears throat> Say, this, uh, this is good. Sure you don't want anything to eat or drink? Uh, got a couple of full bottles here yet. I want nothing. Uh, seeing this is your last night on earth, you're sort of upsetting a tradition. A condemned man's supposed to eat a hearty meal. Well, if you've condemned me, why don't you go ahead and kill me? Why are you dragging out the torture? Oh, I, I, I've got a little plan for you. Uh, you're going to help me get rich. I don't know what fantastic plan you have, but what good will riches do you if, as you claim, this is the end of the world? Oh, you didn't really go for that stuff. No, no. Uh, the natives did, though. Yeah, but they're stubborn. They still haven't told me where they got the gold they make those ornaments of. So once again, gold is the source of trouble. You should see some of the nuggets they've used to make necklaces. A few hours in the place where they get them and, and I'll be fixed for life. By the morning, the natives will know that you have told them nothing but lies, for the world will still be here. But I won't. By the time the storm is abated, I'll be well on my way to Mombasa. The storm? I hear no storm. <laughs> Zaker the Great, in addition to his magic, is also a student of science. Between my almanac and my barometer, I've made out that tonight there will be a great equatorial storm. But what has that to I've do... built for this for weeks now. The Nagalias expect the end of the world. When the storm breaks, they'll be sure it's come. Then I will enter their village with proof that I, Zaker the Great, am powerful over all. Then they will tell me where the mine is. They will do anything I command. And the proof you speak of? I will be leading the Lord of the Jungle on a chain. And they will find that the man no one else has been able to conquer has been transformed by Zaker the Great into a weak, crawling, blind creature. Torgo and the Reverend Martin had come to the village of the Nagalias, searching in vain for some trace of Tarzan. They could find nothing nor could they extract any sort of an answer from the drunken, frenzied savages who danced about the tribal fire. It's no use, Torgo. They won't listen to us. Must find Tarzan. My resources are at an end. I hate to admit failure, but Torgo we... not at end of his horses. Torgo has strong teeth. Torgo, what are you doing? Oh, oh you devil boy. What's he do? He bite Ugar's leg. Now tell Torgo where Tarzan gone. Ugar not know. I do. Oh, oh. Tie up, small devil boy. Take boy, gag and title stake in center council ring. You're not tying the boy up, Sibali. Take boy away. Sibali, oh, surely you have not forgotten all of the teachings of our lord? Not lord of Nagalius. He not stop end of world. There will be no end of this world tonight. The full moon has come and still there is... It's end of world. Like Saker the great say, end of world here. Let me get to the boy. Stop. <laughs> Leave boy alone. You not good. Tell us many lies. I'm going to get that boy if it's the last thing I... Oh. Me pick up missionary. Drag him to Hima. Let missionary stay on ground where he is. Look, Seiko the Great come. Brings prisoner. It's Tarzan. Well, uh, you convinced that the end of the world has come, that Zaker has told the truth? His truth. And now I call your attention to this weak, crawling creature. Do you know him? He's Tarzan. Yes, he's Lord of Jungle. No longer is he Lord of anything. I have taken his power in his sight. It is a sign. Zaker the Great has power over all of you. He will deliver you to the land of happiness, or he will send you to the demons. Oh, no, don't send you demons. Save us, save us. If I am to save you from the demons, you must have no secrets from me. Where is the gold mine? Another moment, and it'll be too late to answer. Always we swear not tell white man where gold. I warn you, unless you answer at once, you'll go to your doom like Tarzan, blind and helpless. Ah! No, not blind as well. Not big like Tarzan. We tell Zipali, chief of Nagalia's tell. The place where we get gold is behind the... Hey. Hey. Wild elephant! Wild elephant! Run! Run for life! Run! 
The lightning and the thunder and the screaming had brought the wild elephant to fever pitch. As he entered the village, trees were smashed as though they were matchsticks. The boma was torn aside by enormous yellow tusks. Native huts were demolished. The bodies were picked up in the great leathery trunk and then hurtled through space. Those about the council fire ran for their lives, save for a small native boy who was tied and gagged, a man of God who lay unconscious on the ground, a blinded giant, and the man to whom he was chained. And then the miracle happened. The elephant grasped Zaker in his trunk, breaking the chain that held him to Tarzan. Zaker was thrown against a huge rock, and then the mad animal charged in the direction of Torgo. Help! Help! Torgo! Help! I should save you, Torgo! Help! Tarzan staggered a few steps, his arms outstretched in the gesture of the blind. And then suddenly the hands came down. He grasped his knife and hurtled himself through space. A moment before the elephant reached Torgo, Tarzan catapulted at the animal, his knife rising and falling, stabbing, twisting, piercing, killing. Torgo, you are all right? Yes, got gag out of mouth just in time. We must see if Mr. Martin is... Oh, there he is, on the ground. Mr. Martin, Reverend Martin. Wake up, wake up. Torgo, dampen this cloth in the small stream right there. Hurry! Surely heaven has protected you, Mr. Martin. I see the Prince of Tantor's hooves not an inch from your head. Here, Torzo, it's my cloth. Sunday. Maybe this will do some good. Mm. Mr. Martin, mm. tell me that you're all right. Uh, ta- Tarzan? Yes. Mm. Yes, it is Tarzan. Tarzan, who must tell you the story of a miracle. Do they come, Tarzan? Yes. Come, men of Nagalia. Your friend and teacher wishes to speak to you. I, uh, I think most of them are here now, Tarzan, those who are left. Chief Sibali, men of Nagalia, once again you have been hurt by the greed and evil of a white man. But just as there are good and bad black men, so there are good and bad white men. The evil Zakir is dead. The good Reverend Martin lives. Tarzan, who is a friend to all in the jungle, begs you to hear him. Speak, missionary. Brothers, for a little while you were misled by a man who showed you tricks, man-made miracles. This morning, as the sun shines down on us, we realize that miracles cannot be made by man. In the darkness and the rain, some strange things happened here. A small boy who was bound found great strength and managed to tear a gag from his mouth. A deranged animal ran wild, and yet his footsteps were guided so that I might be spared to help you. And a man who was blind was permitted to see again because he was needed. Perhaps men of science might explain this phenomenon. They would use words that I understand no better than you. Words like adrenaline and shock and stimuli. But I think all of us have a much more simple explanation. Reverend Martin, some your words we not understand. But what you mean, we understand much. I do not think you ever really believed the world was to end, for if you had, there would have been no need to run from the elephant. Now we believe only what Mr. Martin teach us many years. If you believe, join me in the prayer I have taught you. Our Father, Our Father which, art which art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done in earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day, day our daily bread. bread. Forgive or us our debts. Death. As we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In just a moment, we shall return to tell you about our next story of Tarzan.
The girl had sung in a low, vibrant voice. But it was not the magnetism of her song alone, but the terror in her eyes that brought Tarzan to her aid. With enemies in constant pursuit, ever threatening to still the lovely voice forever and to kill Tarzan for his interference, he manages to delay her inevitable fate as he guides her across a continent in our next story. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Mm -hmm.